Let me guess. You are watching this video on your mobile phone from the comfort of your bed? That's cool. You see. Thanks to the magic of the internet, we can learn an online course, work from home and play our favorite games on any devices over the internet. But have you ever wondered how does all this magic happens? How exactly does the YouTube videos that you are watching right now is streamed from the server to your desktop computer, your laptop, your phone or your smart TV? Well, part of the magic lies in the this thing we called the client-server architecture. On the internet, the client starts talking to a server, and a server would reply back based on the client requests. But the real internet is much more complex than that. For the internet to work, we also need network devices like routers and switches that deliver all our data all across the internet. We will come back into that in a while. But first, let us take a closer look about the client-server architecture. Client-server architecture is the most dominant architecture on the internet today. When you are watching this video on the YouTube apps, your device send HTTP requests to the YouTube server which is located on Google's data center. When the YouTube server receives this request, it will look up for the videos you requested from the storage server that keeps many YouTube videos uploaded by YouTubers and content creators. Then, the server send this video back to your device for your viewing pleasure. In fact, Google host most of these YouTube contents on the content delivery network so that you can quickly browse and watch any YouTube videos you like. Okay. Let's quickly summarize what we've just learned. In a client-server architecture, there are many servers that are hosting different applications. Like Facebook, Instagram or YouTube. These servers is always on and waits for client to connect to them. Meanwhile, client is the end devices like iPhones and laptops that we use our favorite apps on. Normally, client devices would start the connection to an application server. So what exactly is inside the internet? Actually, internet is just a big collection of computer networks that are connected by routers. Computer networks are built with many different network devices that each serve their own networking functions. But there are a few common ones that you should know. Here, we have a PC, a switch, a router and a server. Normally we can classify these devices into either network devices and end devices. Here, the PC and the server is the end devices, while the switch and router is the network devices. Right now, these devices are connected together using the Ethernet cables. In computer network, data can be transmitted across cables in a wired connection or through the air in a Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Now let's take a look at a real-world example. Let's begin by introducing the people in our story. Imagine a small world with several networks. The yellow colored one. That's where the professor lives. The professor use an iMac to prepare the course materials. The other three networks are the home network of three students taking the online class. Taylor Swift is staying in Penang shown in the blue colored network. She likes to watch the lecture videos on her desktop PC. Lady Gaga is from Kampar shown in the pink colored network. She normally watches the lecture videos on her iPhone. Then, we have Dua Lipa from Asgard in the green colored network. She uses a MacBook for all her studies and learning activities. Now let's zoom into the professor's network. As you can see, the professor is working hard to prepare lecture materials for his online classes. He's working on an iMac, which we will refer to as the local host from now on. Currently, he store all the lecture slides, videos and assignments on this local host. Soon, the students got notified about the course materials and they can start downloading these data from this local host to their own devices. In computer network, a server is a physical computing unit that is providing services to clients. In this situation, the professor's iMac is acting as the server that accept connections from the students' devices for them to download course materials. Specifically, we call this an on-premise server, because the server is located on the professor's own premise. Remember that a server can be any device, from a phone to a PC or to a real dedicated servers on a rack. 
The device that the students use to download the course materials are called client devices. Client and servers can communicate as long as they are connected to network or the internet. Normally, the servers are always on as they waits for any client's incoming connections. Most often than not, client usually starts the TCP or UDP connections to the servers. Now let's take a look at how the data packets travel when Dua Lipa downloads the lecture slides from the professor's machine. Her MacBook, acting as the client device in this session, starts a TCP connection to the professor's machine which is acting as the server. The communication can happen over many different kinds of protocols like FTP, HTTP, Telnet or SSH connection. Firstly, the request packet is transmitted from the source host, which is the MacBook in this case, to the destination host, which is the professor's iMac. This packet traverse across the networks through a complex mechanism of packets forwarding, which is handled by routers and their routing protocols. Just like we use Google Map to navigate while driving, routers select the best path for this packet to take so that the packet can arrive quickly and safely to the destination. When the packet finally arrived at the professor's machine, it encapsulate the lecture slides into packet datagram unit. Then, this data packet is sent back to Dua Lipa's MacBook in the opposite direction. So this way of data communication we just learned, it is called the client-server architecture. As the name implies, in this architecture there are servers and there are clients, and remember that servers are serving multiple client at one time, while a client can also connect to multiple servers concurrently. For example, when you scroll through the stories on your Instagram feeds, your phone is acting as the client device send connection request to the Instagram server to get the story's data. On the background, your iPhone might be uploading the photos you've just taken on the camera to the iCloud drive. So now you get the big picture of how the internet works. It may sound simple and intuitive but actually there is lot more going behind the scenes. You see, just like we address our friends by their names, the machines on the network also need their own addressing mechanism. And just like we navigate with Google Maps, the machines also need routing protocols to find their way on the internet. There are a few key things we need to make the internet works. Specifically, we need IP address, MAC address and port numbers for devices to identify their target destination and network applications. Then, we need routers to forward these network packets. In most cases, a domain name server called the DNS is needed to help the end device to find the server's IP address. Then, there is also a complex address translation mechanism called NAT that helps to translate the private address of our devices to the public address given to us by our ISP when we subscribe to the internet. We will talk about each of them in more details in the coming videos. Here's a quick overview on what we'll learn in this course. First, we study the addressing mechanism in computer networks for end-to-end -end communication. Then, we learn about how routers decide the best path for packets to take to travel quickly from the source to the destination. Lastly, we learn about the TCP, IP stack and some other security protocols that ensure our data is transmitted safely from the source host and arrive timely on the destination hosts. So that's it about the internet. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, press the like button below. If you don't, press the dislike button twice. Also don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you'll get notified when the next episodes are released. Happy learning!